jumbles have been around for longer than anyone can imagine. A jumble basically means something whose fundamental elements have been rearranged. The human brain has an amazing cognitive ability to process garbled nonsense. And this is precisely why we will be able to understand entire sentences even if the words or the letters are out of place. Try to read this one. Felt pretty cool doing it, didn't you? This power of the brain to form and crack codes has been used extensively throughout history. Thus was born the art of forming anagrams, which are basically words containing jumbled letters. Here is a fun fact. This is a world famous anagram. The letters of this anagram, when rearranged, form the words Woman Hitler. Makes sense, doesn't it? Some other world famous anagrams are In verbal aptitude tests, jumbles appear in the form of para-jumbles. Solving para-jumbles is like cracking codes. Just like how every code has a cipher, which can be used to crack it, every para-jumble has a strategy, which can be used to solve it. First of all, let us look at the types of para-jumbles. Type 1. Moving jumbles. Here, all the sentences are jumbled up and have to be rearranged. Type 2. Anchor jumbles. Here, one or two sentences will be fixed at the beginning or at the end of the paragraph. The remaining sentences have to be moved around. We will now look into how to solve para jumbles. Unlike that for sentence completion, proactive solving can be disadvantageous and time consuming while solving para jumbles. So, the golden rule is that always work with the answer options. Also, eliminate answer options based on key strategies. We will look at the key strategies one by one. Strategy number one, finding the opening or closing sentence. When you solve a jigsaw puzzle, you are always asked to sort out the edges first, aren't you? Questions on jumble paragraphs are not very different from a jigsaw puzzle. And identifying the first and the last sentence will go a long way towards solving the question. Finding the opening sentence. This can be done by identifying the subject matter of the paragraph. If the paragraph has only one subject matter, then the sentence that introduces a noun is the opening sentence. Also, finding out sentences starting with words like firstly, in the beginning, at the start, etc. helps. Finding the closing sentence. This can be done by understanding the subject matter and finding the appropriate conclusion for the paragraph. It can also be helped by finding out sentences containing words like in the end, in conclusion, ultimately, to sum up, etc. Strategy number two, identifying the mandatory pairs. Some sentences must be a pair. They must proceed or follow the other. Eliminate any answer option that does not contain this mandatory pair. For example, consider this para jumble. Here, statement A ends with a word cast, and statement C starts with words community and gender. We know that caste, community and gender are always used together. Nothing will come in between them. Thus, we can establish a very strong AC link. And in the answer options, there is only one option with an AC link. Hence, option C is the answer. Such mandatory pairs can also be identified in the following ways. 1. Looking for signpost word clues. As we have seen earlier, signpost words provide clues about the direction in which the paragraph is headed. They are also useful in establishing mandatory pairs of different kinds. Words like also, as well as, in addition, likewise, moreover, similarly, etc. connect sentences which are of the same topical direction. Words like but, yet, 
though, even though, although, on the other hand, etc. connect sentences which are of the opposite topical direction. Words like subsequently, next, then, etc. connect sentences in the chronological order. Words like hence, because, as a result of, etc. connect sentences using the cause and effect relationship. Second, looking for the pronoun noun pair. Whenever you see sentences containing pronouns like he, she, it, they, etc., identify the sentence where the noun is introduced. The sentence containing the noun will come first and the sentence containing the pronoun will come after it. For example, consider this parajumble. Here, sentence C has a pronoun, they which means that a plural subject should come before sentence C and that plural subject is found in sentence A, psychiatrists, child workers and educationists. Thus, we can establish an AC link and in the answers, there is only one option with AC link, option A. The third method is to look for abbreviations. Whenever sentences contain full forms and abbreviations, the sentence containing the full form will come before the ones containing the abbreviation. Consider this parajumble. Here, sentence B will come only after A because A is where the full form is provided. The third strategy in solving parajumble is Looking for general to specific transition. A general sentence will always come before a specific sentence. Consider the following example. In the aforementioned example, B is a general sentence introducing the three elements, batting, bowling and fielding. And A is the specific sentence which talks about batting and fielding in particular. Therefore, B will come before A. The final strategy is looking for idea elaboration. A sentence containing an idea usually comes before a sentence giving more information or an example of the idea. Consider this example. Between these two sentences, A is where the idea of weapons and mass destruction is introduced and B is where the idea is elaborated. Therefore, B will come after A.